Hi there, Matthew from Celt here. So I wanted to show you how a few different features in here inside of ScreenFlow work. And so this is kind of bizarre. It's like uh, a screen flow, a screen capture of a screen capture. Um, and there's not a third one, but it's kind of this like inception weird kind of thing happening. So anyway, um, hopefully what I'm going to do is I'll use this introduction piece of footage to show you how you might use so your actual um, webcam video in relation to how that might intersect with some of the screen um, capture that you're doing. And what we'll do is we'll just dive right in now into doing some kind of editing and manipulation. Okay. Great. So one of the things that I want to show you is I want to show you how to manipulate um, your little uh, built-in eyesight uh, video uh, thing, -a -thing. <laughs> video capture. And actually, before we even get to that, one of the things we should touch on first is setting the dimensions for your workspace. So what you're presented with the, um, as you get going here is you actually see the full recorded screen space that's been captured from your computer, which is awesome. But unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily map well to your output options when you're thinking about putting this up on YouTube, Vimeo, or even sharing it with other people. So what we've got to do first is over here, there's this little crop button. And we'll click right there on the crop button, and this will bring up the actual window size that we're going to work with. And what I'd recommend doing is logging this in at 1024, da, 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 24 by 720. And that should be pretty good for us. Now that looks a whole lot smaller, but this is actually 720p high definition. So it's not like the super huge HD video that you see, but this is a, a fairly decent sized resolution in terms of what you're capturing on from the screen. And it's going to give you the ability to zoom in and zoom out without losing a lot of fidelity. It will also make sure that the file sizes that you end up with, um, while they'll be big, they won't be super enormous like they might be if you're using your whole total screen. So again, that's 1024 by 720. And I'll hit apply down here. And now what you're going to see is you'll see this kind of ghosted shape behind this little box. And what that means is that's actually my screen size. Here's my little, um, what do you call it? eyesight video that's here in and on top. And I can actually move these guys all the way around. You can see that this actually goes off of the visible canvas. So this is really the visible space. Okay, so in thinking about how we uh, want our video to start up, one of the things that we might do is we might grab our video here and put this in the center. It helps us out by giving us this nice little yellow crosshair. So help us figure out what's going on in terms of how centered a piece of video is. And then we might want to actually dim the background. So we want, we want to pull some focus to um, the video that's happening here in the front. So the way that I can do that is I can click right here um, down on the section that's for the screen recording. So this is the video flow that's for the screen. This is the uh, microphone audio that you can see right here in a separate layer. And here you can see the video from the iSight camera. So I'm going to click right here on the screen recording. I'm going to head over here to this kind of options palette, configuration palette that you can see. And what I'll do is I'm actually going to grab the opacity for that back layer and I'm going to drag it all the way down. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm making that back layer invisible. So I'm turning it off all the way to get started. So this way my video, my introduction, my face, is the only thing that shows up for people when they get started. Now the other thing that I might want to do is I might actually want to um, add in some video transitions here and bring that back section in. So with the way that works is I can grab my little time, um, my little playhead here, I can place that where I'd like on the um, actual timeline, and then I can say add video action. This is something that I learned the hard way, um, but when you add a video action, this is where you are inserting a change point. So you're telling, essentially, ScreenFlow that you want the change to happen after this marker. So any changes that you make in your options palette are then reflected after that point. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the opacity here back to 100% for that background layer. And I'm going to click right here on this little yellow guy, and I'm going to make this transition a little bit bigger so it takes like four seconds to happen instead of happening in one second. I'm going to grab my playhead. I'm going to drag it back to the very beginning. And when I hit play, what I should see is I should see my nice little video play to roll in here. 
So there's my little introduction, my hello, my name's Matt, I love the world, it's all wonderful. And now what we'll see as we get close here to the transition is we'll see the opacity come up in the background, and we'll actually see the video roll in the background as well. So.